What's up, YouTube? Mr. Zoo Nation, aka Savage Armor Jim Giraffa, coming at you with another episode of the Haters Guide to Car 5 Vanguard. Man, can't wait to do this set. Love them great nature support, kind of. But then also at the same time, a lot of other support is actually pretty decent. I think this was overall an interesting, you know, set. I'm not going to lie. But at the same time, I also feel like that there was a lot of grimy shit that came up in this set as well. Which is honestly the reason why I started this set as like the main set to actually be talking shit about. Because there's a lot of grimy stuff that goes off in this set. And honestly, a lot of the things could be better. Especially seeing that we just came out of set 10. Where set 10 with Luar City that actually just destroyed standard format. But I will admit... After trying to record this and looking through everything, I didn't roast as hard as I should have. But trust me, set 12, I'm going completely in. So, just look at this more as a test inside and everything else. And something that I'm actually pretty interested in, you know, reviewing and whatnot. So, with that being said, let's get this started. If you like videos like this, like, comment, subscribe, do whatever. You already know what to do. I'm Mrs. Zoo Nation, and I'll see you in a bit. The year is 2020. Everything is gone to shit because of COVID. And inside and outside of the card game communities, everybody has been taking a major L. The only person who hasn't really taken a major L was Jeff Bozos, as this whole pandemic made him a whole trillionaire. But Daddy Bushy Road is here to get this out of our mind when it comes to VBT Set 11 Storm of the Blue Calvary. Now this set basically contains Nova Grappler, Nubatama, Aqua Force, and Great Nature, where Great Nature is the one with the two VRs. As we dive into this set, we're going to see the best and the shittiest of the VRs that we've seen all year. Let's get this started. Extreme Battler Victor. Oh, how the mighty has fallen. Don't get me wrong, Victor is actually pretty decent. It allows you on place without a single cost. To look at the seven cards and look up, call up the one grade two or less with a street battler and his card name. It also allows him to get a plus one drive if he restands a unit during an attack, and that unit stood two or more times during that particular turn. But here's the kicker: there's hardly any extreme battler cards outside of Victor that you can choose from. Well, actually, you can't choose Victor. He is a grade three, but that's besides the point. The point is. There's not enough grade 2 or less extreme battler cards to really choose from, which means you do have to play all the extreme battler cards at a playset, and not only that, there's not enough for him to really call in general. Not to mention that there's hardly any ways for you to continuously restand a bunch of your units, especially when a unit that can consistently restand does not have extreme battler in its card name. Now, in my honest opinion, I don't think that more stream battlers could have held Victor out in the long run, but I do believe that there should have been more thought when it came to doing the other supporting cards that supports around Victor. This overall makes him a very shitty VR, but one to not sleep on. Here's the thing. I do believe that the next time Victor does get more support, that Victor will become an overall better card. So I guess in general, this is more of a card to marinate over than just to, you know, flout out, just say that it's not a good card in general. I kind of look at this like Harry. Like Harry's not a bad deck at all, but it's very peaceful, Ryan. And I do feel like that some of the pieces that Harry does have doesn't make him consistent enough to be considered a top tier deck. Although for some odd ass reason, he is killing it in premium. I don't know why he's not killing it in standard, but he's definitely killing it in premium. Unlike Victor, I do believe that Harry just needs another version of Harry and maybe one more Magia doll and it'll be all set. Where Victor, he just needs not only a bunch of extreme battlers, he needs some extreme battlers that can actually restand more than once. Now, I honestly want to say that most of this is because Victor was very dominating in the last days of the G era. 
and I don't think Bushy Road wants him to be like that during, you know, the V era, but that's just me. In my honest opinion, I do feel like that if you were going for Victor, you're kind of sort of disappointed right now. But hey, Nova Grappler players, it's not the end of the world. Because you want to know why? Daddy Bushy Road actually gave you something in his change for shitty Victor. Enter Blouse. Yes, the meme deck of the century has actually gotten support. And the support is good. I don't know why out of nowhere Blouse has came out of nowhere without like initial support. But it's gotten like five or six cards and man, they are they are very good. <laughs> Matter of fact, they are carrying Victor on his back. Yes, you heard that correctly. People are actually doing um Victor Blouse. And Blouse is carrying Victor on his back. You need to give Blouse back surgery because of how much is carrying Victor on his back. That's how bad it is. So, Nova Grappler players, when you're looking to get your split, don't focus on Victor. Focus on Blouse. Next up, we have Demon Stealth Dragon Shirinui Orboro. Let me tell you something about no the Nubatama support. In my honest opinion, Nubatama has a weird thing going on as I don't necessarily know what the whole focus of Nubatama is supposed to be. Now, here's the thing. I'm all up for different playstyles and stuff like that, but I still believe that there should be a main focus to it at the end of the day. Here's a prime example. When they first got in support, their main VR was Magatsu Storm, which was basically all about bouncing your units back and then calling three units back to the field, therefore giving Nubatama a multiple attack. But at the same time, you then had Kuchi Makongo, which was all about bouncing your opponent's units cards back and forcing your opponent not to really guard with whichever you know, great that particular card is. But then you get Jammy Congo in the next wave of support, and Jammy Congo is all about preventing your opponent from having more than five cards in their hand, which is actually pretty cool because it goes back to the discarding strategy, but there's not enough cards to really, you know, because of the first wave of support, there's really not enough cards to really go around to actually justify all that. Then you have Hanzo. Whereas going back to bouncing units and also discarding, but again, there's not a good enough focus because now they're adding tokens to this. So now we're trying to figure out what's the main focus of Nubatama because now we get the Shirat Nui and I know that we're not going to get the original Domination thing because of how powerful it was, but we did get Domination Mask. And although it's not bad, I just feel like that Nubatama is too out of place to make it completely focused. Now, here's the thing. The good thing about all of this is the fact that if you're trying to pick up Shirinui, all you really need is everything from the set, plus maybe the great Magatsu Gale and the Draw Trigger PGs. That's technically all you really need. But at the same time, there is a grade 2 promo card that's supposed to be coming out. And it turns out that we don't know when we're ever going to get that in English. Because obviously, it's one of those promo um, promotional cards that is just like the Dimension Police one. And just like whichever one supports... Um, Whichever one supports Clarence Sword. Then there's also one, I think it's called Die Tiger, that supports uh, Grand Gallop. You know, all of those promotion, you know, all of those promo cards, they basically make the deck that was originally not that good a lot better. And this grade two is no different. And sadly, we don't know when we're ever going to get said promo. It could be the day that we get the set out, it can be a year from now. But honestly, this whole thing with the promo thing in English is very tiring and 
there's already other people who did videos like Vanguard Insider. He already did videos on that and everything else. So I'm not really going to go too much into detail. However, I will admit, Shurinui, both Shurinui Obero and the other Shurinui is actually pretty solid. This allows you to get multiple protect markers, which honestly, I'm not going to say you shouldn't play protect two with this, but at the same time, protect two would be pretty damn good in this set too. But outside of that, even though we don't get full domination, we do get the domination tokens, which is actually pretty good in the nutshell. But if you're not really looking into getting too much of the new support outside of like the grade three searcher for the Hanzo players, just wait for Clan Selection Volume 1. Or was it Volume 2 that the new Hanzo comes out? But yeah, anyway, you already know. Just wait for Clan Selection for the new Hanzo to come out. But overall, I'm not going to say that this is like the worst. But it does depend on a whole... It depends on older... It depends on a couple of older support cards and everything else in order for it to function. So, yeah... Now we're about to enter the shit show that is Marine General of Heavenly Silk Lamberos. Okay, so let me see how we should actually start this. I honestly feel like every single Aqua Force player got screwed over. Now here's the reason why I say this. Lamberos does not have an XL marker, which basically means that this deck is played more like Greer Chronicle instead of something like how Shirinui is played, how Lum Luard is played, and how like Yasui is played, and everything else. Like, you know, basically everything that can, you know, go into more than one grade three per turn. In this particular case, grade four. Now, I know like some people are basically saying that he should have actually gotten the XL marker because, you know, this is coming legitimately after you know Luard and we already know Luard basically broke the format so I can understand people's frustration that they were trying to overbalance this card and you know everything else which I, I can completely agree with it's not necessarily completely a bad card and I don't think that if it did have a marker it wouldn't be completely busted I mean if you can let something like Percival Gugrig let go um, go get away with multiple markers and I guess you can kind of do the same thing with this too But that's not the thing that makes everything the shit show The fact that Lambros is the VR instead of Davis is one thing But at the same time you also got to remember that Maelstrom it actually is the MVP of the set set just like how Blouse is with Extreme Battle of Victor however, you also got to remember that like what, Maelstrom only got like four cards, you know, only four support cards, and it made Maelstrom like the best version of Aqua Force to play with. But you also have to remember something that, that puts the cherry on top of this whole support. You also have the fact that the um, previous Aqua Force support that came out earlier this year was Revron. And because Revron was better than Maelstrom, everybody dropped Maelstrom. Well, almost everybody dropped Maelstrom. So that means that now that Maelstrom is the best version of Aqua Force, that basically means that everybody has to go through those ridiculously high prices just to get all their Maelstrom stuff back. <laughs> oh, Bushy Rose a dick for that one. I will admit that. So overall, not only Davis came back, which was actually one of the most dominating, ver you know, dominating grade threes of the G era. You also got to remember that Maelstrom that was there since day one, be not only came back with four particular cards, but also made Lambros and Davis almost unplayable. Oh my God. If that ain't, if that ain't some shit, then I don't know what is. With that all being said, let's get on to the final clan, 
great nature where it has two VRs. Now let's, I'm going to just get this one out the way. I will admit, as a great nature player, I was actually looking forward to Isabel more than I was looking forward to Big Belly. I don't know. It's probably the degenerate in me. I don't know why. But to be honest, I've been playing Isabel so long. And Big Belly, even in the G era, really wasn't the na the main deck I was playing. I was playing Chattanooga. But seeing that Chattanooga has yet to come out in the V era, I have no choice but to play Isabel. And I completely stuck to that. Now, to be honest, the new Isabel card isn't really that bad. You know, it has an OCT ability where it allows you to look at the top three cards of the deck and put it in any order. It also allows you to reuse on place abilities that would just become dead after the turn ends or after they use their ability. But at the same time, you also got to remember this one itsy bitsy problem with Isabel. It's counter blast heavy with no way to counter charge. This is pretty much the biggest issue with Isabel. And one of the many reasons why I feel like Isabel got completely shafted. They knew that Isabel was actually going to be pretty strong. It was bad enough that we had an ability that only activates its full potential once both players are at grade three. This is, of course, a huge issue because there's a lot of decks that can kill you off before you can even get to grade three. Um, but at the same time, you also got to remember that everything else when it comes to support, where it comes to Binoculus Tiger and Melantha, if you still want to use her, and a lot of other stuff, it's very counter blast heavy. And seeing that there's no counter charger, yeah, Isabel is kind of screwed. But alas... I have slightly lied. There is. There's the grade one promo. You heard that correctly, promo. That allows you to either counter blast or counter charge once it's placed and you're on a grade three. The problem is it's a promo. So just like Shirinui, we have to wait until Bushy Road actually gives us the English format the promo. And nobody knows when we're getting that promo so again but technically isabel is dead on arrival which sucks because now simp's like now nah, i'm not gonna go call myself a simp but anyway so now isabel simps aren't going to be able to use their pink waifu which is actually pretty sad in my honest opinion I know you guys are judging me right now. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Anyway. So even though Isabel is actually pretty good because it also gives 10k to the front row, which means you're hitting for very good numbers, it's just a simple fact that very heavy counter blast management is needed in order for this deck to survive. Next up, we have Big Belly. Big Belly, in my personal opinion, took the set. And this is not me being biased, but let me explain. Big Belly has the ability to, so like, to stand every 20k or higher rear guards as long as you have a great 3 and so. Now you would think that this will be pretty hard to do, but then you enter one of the M Sukes, the one that we got in the previous Great Nature support, which allows you to put any card into the soul just to give himself and whatever units on an extra circle an extra 10k. If you have two or more circles, you get to draw a card. The issue, I mean, the interesting thing about this is now that we have grade three searchers, it's a lot easier to use this ability and it's a lot easier to use Big Belly skill on your first grade three turn which is actually pretty good. On top of that, 
you get to draw a card whenever your rear guard is getting retired by a card ability during battle phase or during end phase, which is also another thing. So you have hand advantage, you have very good field advantage, and you have a very good access, and then you also have restanding vanguards and the ability to get, you know, your grade three into the soul skill so basically you get all your whole skill you get everything pretty easily and you don't have to wait till your opponents at grade three in order to do anything it also has a counter charger let me repeat that it has a counter charger which basically makes it to where you're able to use this ability at will honestly big belly technically won the set there's hardly any restrictions. The support is very good. All you really need outside of this support is draw trigger PGs, which Great Nature has one of the cheapest draw trigger PGs in the game because it's a clan that nobody really cares too much about. So at the end of the day, you get all of this scot free. And then, of course, you need to have Suke as well, but he's at most three, four dollars. And all you really need is two. You don't need a full playset. So overall, I feel like Big Belly, as far as financial wise, as far as like how strong van, um, VRs are in his whole set, he's the best one. Now, granted, if you were to play this against Blouse or you were to play this against um, Maelstrom, that might kind of differ. I do believe that overall. Maelstrom is probably the best, you know, support that came out of this whole set. Like, let's be real on that. But at the same time, <laughs> as far as VRs go, Big Belly's the best one. Like videos like this, like, comment, subscribe, do whatever. I'm Mrs. Z Nation, aka Savage from the Joint Giraffe, signing out.